what, what I basically said in my paper was that um, cancer was causing inflammation in order to hide from your immune system and what I hypothesized at the end of my paper was that if cancer can cause chronic inflammation to hide from your immune system then it's very likely that, that other invaders like bacterial infections and viral infections do exactly the same thing. And what I, what I personally believe is that all of these so-called autoimmune diseases are actually caused by um, these invaders causing inflammation and you know all of the, the horrible symptoms that result in it. Um, they, they cause chronic inflammation to hide from your immune system. Right, which a vaccine could do as well. Yes, that's right. In the dog world, cancer is a, a big killer. So I, I guess you've got quite an important message for the dog world. Yes, yeah, the number one killer in uh, in the dog world at the moment, but uh, it's not it's not just potentially a treatment for cancer. It's a it's a treatment for all of these uh, so-called autoimmune diseases, um, because if if cancer can cause chronic inflammation to hide from your immune system, you know other invaders like bacterial uh, infections and viral infections can do the same. All of the the information that uh, I base my um, idea on is already out there. It was just a case of pulling together all of these different pieces of information and, and pulling together the, the complete picture. And it's not just me saying this now. There's a lot of journal review literature out there that is explaining the same conclusion. But because there is no financial incentive, it, it just isn't going to happen. You know, it has to come from um, people like us and pet owners and people and patients that has got to be the driving force because we are the um, the key stakeholder